Everyone worked hard and tested decibel of the sound of opening an umbrella. The noise issue was resolved. However, Don told Michael that Gretchen did not get the six card. Don asked him to think of another solution. Michael came up with ideas that would sacrifice his teammates, and he accepted. Don gave him an envelope, which Gretchen had given, hoping it would be helpful. It was a photo, and he stood at the shore contemplating it for a long time. Sarah embraced him from behind and told him it was time for surgery. Michael expressed his thoughts. This mission is very dangerous, and it is difficult to predict whether it will succeed. He cannot watch everyone take risks. Then he told everyone that he would not perform the surgery. Lincoln knew he was determined and did not object. To stabilize Michael's condition, Sarah injected him with a nerve suppressant, and Sucre prayed for Michael's safety. General told Lisa about Gretchen's plan to steal the card and asked her to prepare to move Skilla, gathering all the card holders. Teabag called Gretchen and told her the game had begun. Gretchen told him she had contacted another buyer and asked him to go to that address. Teabag noted the address, greeted Trishan, and left. Trishan answered the phone and reported the news to Don. Don acted swiftly and went to the address with his team. He was ready to set a trap and instructed Trishan to shoot if she noticed anything suspicious. But he didn't realize he had fallen into a trap. Feng Huan had been waiting there for a long time. This was Gretchen's conspiracy. Gretchen returned to the office with Teabag. She was waiting for everyone to come out so she could steal Scylla. And Teabag's eyes, full of murderous intent, told her that he only wanted Michael. At this time, Michael is briefing the team on precautions. When they reach the wall, Everyone needs to remain absolutely quiet. After encouraging each other, everyone starts working diligently. Michael creates a magnetic field device. Lincoln and Mahoney drill holes together. Sukri tapes off the construction area and starts breaking through the wall with a coil. Under the influence of the magnetic field, the steel bars twist and loosen, and the concrete shatters. Sukri uses a small hammer to chip away at the cracks and dig through the wall. Lincoln and Mahoney make two small holes above and insert two umbrellas. Michael assembles the ladder and guides the two to position the umbrellas correctly. With everything ready, Sucre delivers the final blow to the wall. The group quietly admires Scylla and resumes working. The broken stones fall into the umbrellas, making no sound. Mahoney and Lincoln thread the tension locked through the hole from above, and Sucre hooks them onto the ladder. Sucre climbs while laying down wooden boards to cool the temperature and progresses slowly. Suddenly, the ladder drops, but Sucre quickly grabs onto the can. Lincoln quickly adjusts his position, and Mahoney holds onto the tension lock from outside. Fortunately, the passage is successfully created. On the other side, Lisa has arranged all the transfer work, leaving only the execution for the rest of the team. She mentions that the cardholders will arrive soon. General is satisfied and tells her to go to the charity event. Lisa wants to stay, but General refuses, saying that normalcy should be maintained at this time, and he affirms her work. Lisa is happy to receive General's praise. Meanwhile, Sarah arrives at the company headquarters and sits on a bench, putting the envelope in her bag. She watches as Lisa walks past her from behind, and Sarah prepares to take action. At this point, Michael is about to retrieve Scylla. However, he suddenly has a relapse of his illness, but he manages to push through. He arrives in front of the glass enclosure and takes off his backpack to start working. He first secures two glass suction cups and uses a glass cutter to make a circular cut. Then, he sprays liquid nitrogen onto the score, easily removing the entire piece of glass. Michael carefully places the glass down and slowly approaches Scylla. He observes this dangerous object and directly places his hand on it triggering the monitors to sense his touch. General sees Michael holding Scylla and is stunned. He leads his men to rush down. After triggering the monitors, Michael remains motionless. He looks at the card slot and finally understands the purpose of the cards. General and his men are ready to confront and overpower Michael. However, Lincoln and the others have already pointed their guns at them. Mahoney tells them to lower their guns. They aim their guns at the equipment and General quickly orders his subordinates to lower their weapons. He remains calm and states that Michael has lost. Michael is also calm, and in fact, he has everything prepared. He asks General to give him the data card. General takes up the card. Michael inserts the card into the device and then five more card slots appear. 
General takes pleasure in Michael's apparent failure. Michael doesn't say a word and silently takes out the remaining five cards. This confuses General, and he asks how Michael obtained them. Michael tells him not to be too upset and then inserts all the cards to retrieve Scylla. General struggled to say that they couldn't escape even if they got it. Michael wasn't thinking about escaping because he knew that returning the same way would be a trap set by Gretchen and Teabag. Besides, he still had an ace up his sleeve, so they brazenly took General hostage and entered his office through the elevator. On the other side, Don, who was tied up, secretly took out the handcuff key. Trishan tearfully accused him of putting herself in this situation, Gretchen being unable to control Michael and them not being able to get the cards. Feng Huan immediately wanted to contact Gretchen, but Don took the opportunity to unlock the handcuffs and quickly dealt with the three of them. Feng Huan and Don then reached a standoff. However, Trishan shot Feng Huan dead. Don was a little dissatisfied, as he wanted to keep someone alive. He told Trishan to take care of Gretchen while he handled the situation. Gretchen was dealing with the gate boss who thought he was a client wanting to come in and say hello. But when he noticed the assault rifle under the table, he got a little nervous. However, his mental resilience was good, and he found an excuse to leave. Gretchen knew she had been exposed, so she grabbed her gun and went after him. She rushed into the boss's office and told him to hang up the phone. T-Bag was instantly unemployed and heartbroken. His dignified working career came to an end, and he picked up the gun in frustration. When Trishan arrived, she saw this scene. She quietly opened the door and signaled the female employee not to expose her, hiding on the side. T-Bag couldn't wait and wanted to leave. But Gretchen was unwilling because she could earn 125 million in another 20 minutes. In General's office, Michael sat in a chair, studying Scylla. General urged him to give up struggling because the building had already been locked down, and they wouldn't have any results. Michael continued to write and draw, ignoring him. Lincoln felt puzzled about their efforts to protect a blacklist. General said that they were too naive, as he had known Lincoln's father for a long time. He advised them not to make the same foolish mistakes and that they knew too little about the company and their parents. Lincoln cannot tolerate General mentioning his mother. General quickly restrained himself, fearing he would be beaten. He then attempted to bribe a few people with money, asking Sucre to think about his daughter and Mahoney to find his ex-wife. However, Mahoney directly shut him down. Michael had a headache and told him to shut up. They didn't want anything except for the company to be destroyed and for him to be sent to prison. General confidently said it was impossible. While Lisa was in the bathroom, she coincidentally ran into Sarah. Soon after, General received a call from Lisa, with Sarah pointing a gun at her, demanding that he release Michael and let them leave. Otherwise, she would kill Lisa. It turned out that Gretchen had told Michael about Lisa being General's daughter. Unable to bear it any longer, General was unwilling to let Sarah harm Lisa. Michael revealed the list he had just made, showing all the people General had killed, including their family and friends. He asked if General really thought his daughter's life was more important than theirs. General didn't think so. Now he only cared about the company. Lincoln looked at the old man compromising and began the next step. He wants to move Scylla, right? Let they see it. Now, no matter how many guns there were outside, they were useless. They could only watch as General and his group left. At gate, T-Bag argued with Gretchen because no one came to meet them. Why doesn't she understand? They failed. Trishan took the opportunity to slip in and said she was a special agent here to rescue them. The boss began to doubt his life choices, wondering what kind of employees he had hired. Trishan wanted the employees to pair up and run outside, but the boss couldn't wait and rushed out in a hurry. Gretchen shot at him, and the boss quickly went offline. The situation escalated, and T-Bag and Gretchen escaped from the company. In the parking lot, Gretchen frantically wiped fingerprints and threw away the gun, preparing to run away. She told him to quickly throw away the gun. T-Bag just threw his gun into the trash can, and Gretchen immediately raised her small gun. He's just a tool. Since this thing can't be done, he has no value anymore. But T-Bag's luck is better. Trishan, who was chasing after him, disrupted Gretchen's plan. She could only escape for now. As for T-Bag, who is usually caught, although he saved his life, he can only wait to go to prison. Mahoney interrogates the general, pressing him about how it feels to be threatened. Sucre adds that their retribution is him. Lincoln presses the man against the car, making him remember that this is what they do. He has wanted revenge for a long time.
The general doesn't want to make it easy for him either. He tells Lincoln that his father was an executioner who was responsible for killing everyone who betrayed the company. Now the trained assassins he trained will also hunt them down. Lisa is very upset and says that as a doctor she can't kill innocent people. Michael and the others are all bad people. Sarah is speechless. She didn't realize Lisa was still so naive. But considering how evil her father is, Sarah tells her to turn around and listen obediently or she will shoot. When the bodyguard finds Lisa, Sarah has already disappeared. After receiving a phone call from his daughter confirming her safety, the general tells her to go home first. He wants to get Scylla back and then kill Michael and the others. Michael calls Don from the armored car transferring Scylla. Don tells him to stay alert and meet at the rendezvous point. When they arrive at the airport, Michael tells Mahoney and the others to find a safe place to stay. But their whereabouts are immediately reported to the general by his men. The general gives the order not to allow the plane to take off. Michael looks at the flight cancellation information and notices the men who followed them. Then he sends a text message indicating that the operation is starting now. After receiving the message, Mahoney makes a phone call in his capacity as a police officer. At this moment, the men stop Michael and threaten to take the bag from him. Michael hands it over, but suddenly they are all taken away by heavily armed soldiers. Mahoney was the one who reported them, but his men are not worried. Because inside the bag, there is only a computer and a hard drive. But the situation in the bag turns out to be even more legal than he expected. The computer is there, but the hard drive has turned into a book. The hard drive is actually with Susser, and the general is very confused when he learns the news. Michael hands Scylla over to Don, who takes out a file bag and congratulates them on regaining their freedom. A car will pick them up in half an hour. These are their relocation documents. He is now going to see a senator. They have changed everything. Michael shakes his hand. Everyone feels that after going through so many hardships, happiness has finally arrived. Lincoln hopes that Michael's surgery will be successful. Mahoney takes out beer and celebrates with Sucre. He feels that he has been on the run his whole life, and now he can finally take a break. Sarah is afraid that after going through so much, she will still lose Michael. Michael is also unsure, so he can only hold Sarah tightly. D-Bag is the most pitiful. Trishan knew his identity from the beginning. D-Bag asked her if she would believe he was a gold medal sales genius speaker if she didn't know his identity. Trishan admitted that he did confuse many people. T-Bag suddenly felt very sad. He remembered the slogan of Gate Company. He didn't expect that when he wanted to be a good person, he was still imprisoned in the criminal cage he had built with his own hands. Time passed little by little, and Michael was expressionless on the phone. Meanwhile, Lincoln approached Mahoney. He had previously said that everything would end with a big fight with Mahoney, but now they reconciled completely. But an hour passed, and the car Don mentioned still hadn't arrived. Michael called the number, but it was out of service. Everyone realized that something was wrong. Don actually went to meet Trishan. He asked her where Gretchen was and if she overheard any other buyers mentioned by Gretchen. Trishan said that the people had already left and she didn't know the information about the buyers. But Teabag might know through interrogation. Don felt a little guilty, but he still shot Trishan without hesitation. It turned out that Don deceived Michael. His true intention was to sell Scylla. He recruited Whistler using his identity as a national security agent. After discovering his ulterior motive, he planted Trishan and Gate Company to monitor him. His plan was to eliminate Whistler after obtaining Scylla and personally contact the buyer. But he didn't expect Whistler to die so quickly, and Teabag happened to get involved in the scheme. So, he persuaded Michael, and the plan was implemented again. Now he has achieved his goal and it's Michael and the others who have been deceived. Michael took the file bag, and everyone nervously watched him. But the bag didn't contain relocation documents, only a pile of blank paper. 